Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and this it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't, remember. I don't like how inevitable this week felt. And when I say that, I mean it was the necessary part of the transition back to normalcy. Christmas music is gone, all the album bombs went away, at least until Morgan Wallen potentially sweeps in next week. And ergo, we had a lot of gains and returns, and even some songs that got a chance to get on board because something needs to fill in the gaps here. But the problem is that given that we're in the middle of January, we're talking about late album release cycles, very delayed country runs, or the sort of songs that the label does not have all that much faith or stock in, meaning that for many of these tracks they just suck, because this week is not that good at all. In fact, it's one of the worst I've had in recent memory. But okay, our top 10 and Mood by 24K Golden and Ian Dior is still at number one. And yeah, I'll admit it, it's starting to wear on me just a little bit. This song was not built to be at the top of the charts for this long. But given that it actually has strong streaming and just rules the radio, it's just the most consistent right now. And it's not like Positions by Ariana Grande is providing much competition here. It just lags in every single category and hasn't really had the momentum to make up the gap. I kind of wish it would. And look, I'm not going to expect Blinding Lights by the weekend, currently at number three, to do much of anything. It should be on its way out right now, judging by its radio, even if it's got a bit of a sales revival for some reason. Now this takes us to Holy by Justin Bieber featuring Chance the Rapper at number four, which I thought would make more of a move at some point, but despite its sales, it is just bleeding on the radio, which might give me the impression that programmers thought this was more of a hollow holiday maneuver as I did, and maybe they found an excuse to get rid of it early. I wouldn't blame them. Then we got Go Crazy by Chris Brown and Young Thug, actually picking up a spot to number five, pretty much just because the radio loves it. It's still gaining there. But then we actually have a new breakthrough into the top 10. Anyone by Justin Bieber at number six. Huge sales, a streaming debut, it's already making the radio run. I'll talk about my opinions on the song later, but this could be a thing. We will have to see with this. Then we got Levitating by Dua Lipa featuring DaBaby at number seven, which is another song that's primed to do very well in the future with good sales and radio traction. And even streaming's finally picked up a little bit. It's just eating into the margins there, which is probably how it broke past laughing now Cry Later by Drake featuring Lil Durk, which is down at number eight. Although the radio losses there might be the bigger factor, at least until Certified Lover Boy comes out and it gets another boost. But then we've got something that I'm sure everyone wants me to get angry about. Bang by AJR in the top 10 at number nine. I mean, I could say that it's a mostly stable radio hit. Its sales are still abnormally high because this band actually has a bass and that is deeply alarming going into their projected album this year. But I can also say the top 10 is very weak right now. It's got no palpable streaming to speak of, which says a lot more. And it really only got this high because I Hope by Gabby Barrett and Charlie Puth is imploding down at number 10. More good timing than anything else, I'd say that. Plus, trust somebody who knows, there's far worse from AJR out there. Bang might not be good, but it's not terrible either. Now for our losses and dropouts, look, it's pretty much the Christmas music, all the album bombs, that's the only stuff in the latter category, let's be real there. And we only got three losers this week too. Two from Lil Durk with Backdoor down at 74 and Stay Down with Black and Young Thug at 84. And then there's BTS's Dynamite, where the last gasp of the sales push finally faded and and this fell out of the top 10 to go to 25. Shocker. This is also the reason why AJR got up as high as they did. But the bigger story really is our returns and gains. We're nearly a full third of the Hot 100 went up and we got nearly a dozen returns. So I'm just very tempted to go back to my spreadsheet formula given that this is still technically the fallout from Christmas. But you know what? I got less debuts to work with this week and I wanted to distract myself with something. So I will be generous and include some of our listeners 
list here properly. The problem is that a lot of our returns are just a lot of crap filling in the gaps. Moonwalking and Calabasas by DDG at 82, Some Girls by Jameson Rogers at 85, One Too Many by Keith Urban and Pink at 89, Casey Talk by Young Boy Never Broke Again at 90, Wonder by Sean Mendez at 91, wow, he underperformed, Everywhere But On by Matt Stell at 96, and Reminds Me of You by Kid Leroy in the late Juice World at 99. Let's be real, the only interesting returns here are La Noche de la Noche by Bad Bunny and Rosalia at 92, and the preemptive spikes for Morgan Wallen, with Somebody's Problem at 81 and still going down at 98. I mean, I've got a hard time getting ahead of concrete streaming numbers from Morgan Wallen, but this album bomb could well be a thing, just letting y'all know about that in advance. Now, our gains can really be split into four categories, starting off with the debuts from last week that actually got a bit of traction, like Good Days by SZA at 23, Just The Way by Parmalee and Blanco Brown at 75, The Good Ones by Gabby Barrett at 77, Down To One by Luke Bryan at 72, and Monsters by All Time Low featuring Blackberry and Demi Lovato at 70. I'm legit kind of shocked by that last one. I thought it would be gone the weekend later. But then we get the returns that picked up. Happy Anywhere by Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani up at 32. Save Your Tears by The Weeknd up pretty big off that video to 46. Take You Dancing by Jason Derulo at 57. Beers and Sunshine by Darius Rucker at 64. What's Your Country Song by Thomas Rhett at 68. Happy Does by Kenny Chesney at 69. Man, there's a lot of country here. Midnight Sky by Miley Cyrus at 71 and So Done by Kid Leroy at 80. Then we get the songs that didn't move from last week, but somehow got a boost now. Without You by Kid Leroy at 54, Bichota by Carol G at 73, and Way Out by Jack Harlow featuring Big Sean at 83. And now, for our continued gains, going from the bottom up, Put Your Records On by Rip Momney at 67, Damaged by Her at 66, Golden by Harry Styles at 65, Back to the Streets by Saweetie featuring Jhene Aiko at 63, Your Mind Still by Young Bleu and Drake at 56, Mr. Right Now by 21 Savage and Metro Boomin featuring Drake at 55, Cry Baby by Megan Thee Stallion featuring DaBaby at 44, My Ex's Best Friend by Machine Gun Kelly and Black Bear at 41, You Broke Me First by Tate McRae at 40, and On Me by Lil Baby at 38. And now for the rest of the country to fill things in, Seven Summers by Morgan Wallen at 53, Good Time by Nico Moon at 48, Hole in the Bottle by Kelsey Ballerini at 45, and Champagne Night by Lady A at 33. The fact that last one's becoming a hit kind of pisses me off. Let's not mince words here. This should be nowhere near as big as it is, because I don't think anyone really cares about it. But now we're on to our new arrivals, and this list is actually somewhat manageable. The problem is that a lot of it really sucks. I've already brought this up, so let's start with number 100, Heat Waves by Glass Animals. You know, I saw someone claim that folks turned on this song preemptively because they saw a lot of critical dislike, and given my pretty harsh review of the album, I was cited as one of the factors that soured people on this. I, I guess my response is that I couldn't stop this from charting, and while it gets annoying when I see people just parrot what I say in comparison with formulating and coming to their own opinions, this is one of those songs that I genuinely really did not like from the album when I I covered it, and it has not gotten any better months later. Dave Bailey's exaggerated inflection and entirely too much pitch shifting over a runny mix that sounds like Tame Impala trying to do pop trap, paired with rhymes that are just completely dropped and flubbed at random, and we get a genre pile up for this sort of song where you can tell that our front man is scrabbling to make this mean more than it actually does, plus sound more relatable. The content seems to indicate that it's about cutting through the mirage
montages and dealing with this person's departure in his life, having a little bit of maturity and recognizing the distortion that comes from their passion that's represented by the heat. But there's two problems here. One, it kind of feels weirdly skeevy and trying to make a swing for this person anyway with lines like, you know it hurts me too, you look so broken when you cry. But the second problem is that Bailey has said this song in reality is supposed to be about all the art that he is missing now given the lockdown, which not only does not match your lyrics, it does feed into this wonky, half-formed sense of millennial nostalgia that permeated the entire album and frankly stank the high heavens. Honestly, the song just might work better on a smaller scale, and the fact that he was trying to make it feel like so much more than it really is just makes this feel all the more thin. In other words, it's still lousy. Next. Number 97, Lady by Brett Lady, Young. You'll always be my baby, but look at her, baby girl, and you'll learn how to be a lady. You know, I'm a bit surprised that Brett Young doesn't get more attention when it comes to the whole boyfriend country thing. Given that his initial run of singles, alongside with Kane Brown and Thomas Rhett and maybe Dan and Shay, kind of really kicked it off in the mainstream, if we're being real. Anyway, this is a song from May of last year from him, and... Well, discovering that this actually wound up on a Mother's Day compilation wound up making a lot of sense, because between the very liquid guitars blended in with the strings arrangement, and a lot of the gentle percussion, and the fact that this is all laser targeted at his infant daughter, who he wants her to look at her mom to grow up to be a lady like her, it really does seem like it's weapons tested for a Hallmark Channel demographic. Now, that's not saying that it's bad, it's a little bit cloying, and I don't think some of the backing vocals on the second hook really is blended all that well, but you know what, it's also kind of harmlessly sweet, it will play well to that target audience, they need music too, and Brett Young can convey sincerity. Honestly for me, he's just kind of generic, doesn't give me a lot to say, let's move on. Number 95, Almost Maybes by Jordan for the almost maybes. You know, since MCA Nashville threw all that money behind rejuvenating Sam Hunt's career, you would think they would actually pull back a little bit and maybe let Jordan Davis fall back into obscurity, but nope, he's back yet again with a single from his project that also dropped in May of last year. And can I ask, what the hell is up with the percussion and drums on this song? A mashup of some island progressions and these big booming kicks and the fake hand claps? It just feels obtrusive intrusive, but also terribly blended with any attempt at organic instrumentation that is just smothered in the background. There's very little actual tune outside of the vocal line. Hell, the production is so distractingly bad, I almost couldn't even get to Jordan Davis and his non-presence on the song, which is probably a good thing, because this song is basically him listing off all the almost maybes, where the relationship could have worked out with his exes, but just didn't before he met his new partner. And yet he seems so blissfully unaware of how awkward that conversation can really be, especially with how conversational the lyrics actually feel. The tone here is just a disaster, and when you match this, with being an overproduced clunker yet again coming from Jordan Davis. His production's been the, arguably the biggest problem with this guy. Yeah, I, I didn't like this at all. Let's hope this does not get big. It shouldn't. Number 94, Hell of a View by Eric. This living on the edge, you holding me, holding you. It's a hell of a view. Oh, thank God, a country artist who knows what the hell he's doing. Although, truth be told, Eric Church has been pushing out some one-off singles for a while now, and I'm not really sure what any of it is building up to, or if anything at all. This is his newest single, and... Okay, look, my standards for great Eric Church singles are ridiculously high, so I'm not gonna call this another Desperate Man or Record Year, but it is still pretty damn good, especially in comparison with the rest of the field. Eric Church is one of those few 
artist who could actually wrangle Jay Joyce into a little bit of shimmering Americana and subtlety, especially as he ramps up his own more soulful holler, anchored in a very strong bass groove and some sharp staccato keys. And that fits the roots rock vibe of the song of living wild on the road with your girl that's in a lot of the content. And you know, considering Eric Church's record with love songs can be extremely hit and miss. I mean, come on, I remember Wrecking Ball. This falls in very similar territory to Springsteen and winds up pretty damn good as a result. It's not his best, but coming out of Nashville, especially this week, hell, I, I'll take it. Number 93, Back in Blood by Pooh Shiesty featuring Lil you know, maybe it's just me, but if your rap name is Poo Shiesty, I might have a hard time taking you all that seriously, which is kind of odd because this is his first song on the Hot 100, and it's with Lil Durk rapping about robbing and shooting people. And... Honestly, if it wasn't for Lil Durk, this would not be a thing. It would not have charted. He's got more energy, tighter lyrical construction, and he outshines Poo Shiesty by a considerable amount. Plus, his name is not Poo Shiesty. Now, granted, when the production's a piano loop and your stock trap beat, well, it's kind of surprising that the frontman's not impressing me over that either. He sounds like Yo Gotti, but with a clunkier run-on flow that's trying to do a baby thing in its structure and failing, with his brrr ad-lib filling in for personality. I mean, I'm not all that impressed, but I don't expect it's gonna last. Number 88, Mama's House by Dustin Lynch. You know, there was a time where I was trying to root for Dustin Lynch. I knew he could make some interesting music. Whereas now we're stuck with a single he put out in December of 2019 off an album I'm fairly certain everyone else has already forgotten about. Here's your concept. You're making a song where you say post-breakup that you would burn down your entire small town in rage, except your mama's house is there, so you're not gonna do that. And even though this is probably the most psychotic thing I've heard in a mainstream country song outside of Sam Hunt, since Tyler Farr's Redneck Crazy, but you can't sell any of the anger, you can't pick instrumentation that's got any sort of low-end heft, just a bunch of sandy acoustics that vibrates off the snap and trap beat, how in the nine hells do you flub your tone and sound this badly even before the synths come in. It's not even appropriately hellish or really incendiary. This isn't starting any fires. Make it a villain song in a minor key. You could have something here. Wouldn't guarantee it's all that good, but it could be interesting. But no, this wants to be wistful and wow, it fails as a result. Yeah, this is crap. But maybe not even so bad as number 87, Girl Like Me by the Black Eyed Peas and Shakira. Looking for a girl like me. Looking for a girl like me. <sighs> you know, I've been a Shakira fan for almost 20 years now. I remember the early 2000s. She was such a unique presence and writer and performer that even when she was kind of weird, I really came around to it. But in the past four or five years, her material has gotten stiffer and clunkier and more bland and soulless and then the Black Eyed Peas. I'll deal with Shakira quickly. I'm comfortable calling this her worst ever performance. She sounds like a dying seal. Not helped by Will I Am leaving her stranded out in the mix with no support against the sterile claps and rubbery bass. If you are trying to make a song where you want to emphasize just how hot and sexy Shakira is to this day in the most basic borderline fetishistic Latina's way possible. Why make her sound so awkward? Why make her sound so stilted? Especially when the guys here continue to treat Spanish like garnish for your writing by basically repeating the same phrase from one language to the next. But you know what? Here's something you probably don't know about this song. They started work on this in 2008. At one point, Rita Ora was involved. If you have 12 years to make something and it sucks this bad by the end, this should never have been released. This is trash. Next up, number 79, Long Live by Florida Georgia. Manners at old school, haggard and hang. Long live, long neck bottles and wide open throttles and old dirt roads with no name. 
part of me that is immensely cynical about this band thinks that this was only really released because they had to reassure their label bosses that, no, 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 seriously, they really aren't breaking up this time, even despite all those solo album rumors that have been swirling around the past couple of months. But I think the larger conversation is at this point, with Bro Country firmly being replaced, do we even have a need for songs like this? Yeah, there's no Joey Moy on the production, given that they've changed labels since, but the fake trap percussion slips in behind the clunky twang with depressing routine as these two will squawk about the same dreary list that they've hit on their entire careers. I feel like I've heard this hundreds of times before, sometimes even from them. The literally most interesting line is that they said, long live the Walmart parking lot. That's where we're at, people. Look, it's hopelessly generic. It's a sign this duo is so thoroughly out of ideas, it's not even funny. And again, on that regard, it's somehow not the worst of the country we had this week. Go figure, but I ain't recommending this. And finally, number six, Anyone by Justin Bieber. I had heard ahead of time that this was an okay song. Not a great song, but in Justin Bieber's newest apology tour, this one had actually clicked a little more with some audiences, so while I had no expectations, and rightfully so given 2020, maybe it wouldn't suck as much as his other recent singles or guest appearances? Well, it actually turns out some of those rumors were valid because this is actually pretty decent. Hell, if you replace the underwhelming void of charisma that is Justin Bieber at its core and put, say, any member of One Direction on the lead vocals, maybe even Liam, I'd probably call this a pretty conventional love song in its content that's really amplified by ramping up the sweeping 80s-inspired balance as much as they possibly can, especially with the swells of reverb keyboards from Charlie Puth, the bass guitar from John Bellion, Watt's guitar, the thicker percussion, and and a legit closing crescendo that sounds really good. Now, the one thing I will give Justin Bieber here is that he actually does have some pretty good falsetto, and he sounds better than usual. And while I'm inclined to give more credit to the arsenal of people willing this song into existence, Bieber does not sound bad on it. I will give him a modicum of credit. Hell, I actually might argue it might be his best song since 2015. That says a lot. But still not the best of this horrible week because that's gonna go to Hell of a View by Eric Church. Justin Bieber is getting the honorable mention though, so let's not complain. Anyone is not a bad song. I wouldn't have a problem if it stuck around because it is pretty good. And frankly, the West of this week blew ass. I'm actually going to give out two ties this week. For the worst, we got Girl Like Me from the Black Eyed Peas and Shakira, almost on disappointment alone, tied with Mama's House by Dustin Lynch. Wow, that song pissed me off way more than I thought it would. And for our dishonorable mentions, we've got another tie, because I'm having Heat Waves by Glass Animals, tying with Almost Maybes by Jordan Davis. You know what? I might have very mixed opinions on Morgan Wallen's new album. We will get to that on my main channel soon, but we might need an album bomb to purge some of these next week, just saying. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliate of Spectrum.